Okay, uh, thanks, Brandy, so much for taking time to, uh, to do this interview. Uh, it would be great to have you give a brief background on OBCV and uh, Luxonics and you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, more than happy to. Uh, like like I've mentioned in the Kickstarter updates, you know, it's a childhood dream building building these out of RC cars and constructs. That was literally my fifth fifth grade project. Um, so I'm really excited about what you're building here. Um, so brief background on you know OpenCV and, and Luxonis. Uh, you know, OpenCV's mission is uh, to bring the power of computer vision to everyone, to, to yeah. educate folks, to uh, get libraries available, uh, to get hardware available, and to have a community so it's efficient. Uh, and then Luxonis mission uh, fits really well in with that. Uh, you know, we're, we had this need for a specific type of um, a camera system that could perceive depth and run AI and run computer vision all at high resolution, high frame rate on a tiny thing. Uh, oh, I actually do. I couldn't find my camera for the interview, so I'm using my Mac, but, but I do have an Oak D light. And so, you oh, okay. know, being able to you make something that's tiny. Um, so, I also have yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, and so that fits well uh, and brings, um, you know, the community this capability to have all of this capability um, now in something that's tiny. Um, so that's that's looks on its mission. Um, is to allow you know tiny things to have this capability too to push yeah. that forefront. Yeah, yeah so great. Uh, uh, what got you into this, and uh, uh, what drive you, and uh, why do you do what do you do here? Yeah, that's that's a great question. So, um, what what originally got me into it actually was was one of my mentors who just quit. Um, so uh, <laughs> at, at my day job, um, John Sanford left. Um, and uh, you know, I was perplexed because uh, usually people don't leave when when companies are successful and businesses are successful, and, and we were just crushing it. Like it was super fun. We were scaling, being able to have a big impact on the world, and he left. And so I was like, John, what what, what are you doing? <laughs> Why are you doing this? Yeah. And he he was like, you know, I, I love working here. Done a long time. Really like this company. In fact, I'm still going to help. Um, you know, but I need to go full time into AI. Um, and I knew nothing about AI at the time, and uh, you know he continued on. He was like, you know, AI is going to be the biggest opportunity in my career, um, and I was like, really? Like, you know, this is a guy I really look up to. He's he's built and um, sold businesses, you know, mentored some extremely successful people in business, and he's saying this is the biggest opportunity of his career. Um, so that's what originally got me into it, actually. So I uh, after that, I went home and started googling, called one of my friends who you know I knew had just started an AI company, uh, talked to him about it, learned about all the breakthroughs. And I realized that I was like, like almost a decade late. <laughs> um, and so uh, I became obsessed with it over the next year. I just, you know, read every medium article I could. Uh, and I eventually left um, with an idea to start my own company, just like my, my mentor had, um, one of my mentors had. And, uh, and, and then in that process, uh, you know, I just ended up learning a whole lot. Um, and uh, the idea I was actually going to make was uh, a non-1980s version of laser tag. Um, but while I was recruiting for that, um, a, a bunch of folks in our, I found out a bunch of folks in our community here in Colorado were hit by distracted drivers. One was killed and, and three were very, very injured. Um, and so I pivoted into seeing if you could apply this you know, AI, CV, spatial sensing that I was already doing for a, a non-1980s version of laser tag to um, trying to keep people safe, uh, people who ride bikes to and from work safe from distracted drivers. Uh, and that's what actually <laughs> brought us down this whole path um, was that, uh, you know, I was already working in that direction, but more like um, edge where you could have relatively heavy, relatively big things, you know, things that, you know, would, would crush a mini pupper, you know, because it's way too big. Um, and uh, to, to try to save these people's lives, um, we needed it to be, you know, embedded. We needed it to be tiny, you know, the the size of OP lights. That's that's part of the reason we're so excited about yeah. this, is yeah. you could very, very reasonably, tiny, but very What's that? powerful. Yeah, yeah. tiny but very powerful. Yeah, exactly. So um, that's what led into it, and we discovered that um, there actually was a chip that allowed you to take all these like disparate edge components, like a depth sensor in a you know mini computer, like a Raspberry Pi, and and mm -hmm. so forth, and um and computer vision and, and ai and, and cram them all together um so where oak d light isn't standalone we have versions that can run standalone oak d light is intended to be used with pi 
uh, and that was the Myriad X. But um, big companies being big companies, having to serve big markets, the Myriad X is only being used by, you know, like Hikvision and, you know, uh, Magic Leap and Samsung and, and so forth. And, and no one who wanted to use it for these purposes for, you know, uh, small spatial AI embedded spatial AI could use it. And so to solve our problem, uh, we had to build the platform, which sounds kind of unreasonable that, you know, we just, we were unwilling to, to, to not continue on what we wanted to build. So we built the platform, OpenCV AI kit, and very early on, we realized we would be yeah. doing the equivalent of, of making a blender um, and, you know, solving an important problem and then tucking it into some blender firmware if we, um, if we didn't make it a platform. So we decided to make it a platform that then we could use to solve our problem and all sorts of other folks could use to solve theirs and make cool things. Yeah, yeah, very cool uh, platform, OpenCV platform. Uh, you know, OAKD Line is one of the most popular uh, Kickstarter campaign project. Could you please uh, give a little bit uh, uh, the background? Yeah, absolutely. So. Um, you know, we learned a bunch of stuff. We did a uh, Kickstarter last time and we had a you know, huge community support, uh, you know, despite, you know, not doing marketing or anything, folks bought a lot of these. This is one of the original prototypes. So it's actually, uh, the, the Oak D looks a little better than it's not silver screws, but um, then we got to see how, you know, like 10,000 plus users actually use this thing. Um, and so we learned a bunch of stuff. Um, one, like we, we like, it, these were all my bad calls. Like I told the team to do these, like the, the mounting people didn't like the size people didn't like the weight. It was heavier than it needed to be. I was afraid that there could be some thermal problems. So it's too heavy. Um, we had made the whole thing around a system on module for the finished product. And, and folks said, we love the system on module. We love that you have open source reference designs, but like we would rather this be smaller in, in this one, um, not use the system on module because we just want it as a finished camera. So the, the main feedback that we got was, you know, it's, it's too expensive, uh, which, you know, it being so big and heavy was part of that. Um, it's uh, too heavy. Uh, it's too big. Um, and what else? Uh, the, the mounting's no good. Uh, and so Oak D Light is a culmination of a lot of those. And then there was, you know, a, a lot of other feedback too that was positive, right? Folks were like, I should have started out with, you know, we loved this. But right, like it's the software is super useful. We really like using it, but those things can pre prevent us from using it. And so Oak D Light was kind of like the the answer to a lot of those, where it's you know a lot lot smaller. Um, yeah, it's exactly. it's yeah. kind of even hard to understand until you hold it, and you're just like, because it's just the weight of this one. Uh, and then the other important feedback too, it wasn't you know complaints or direct or anything, but kind of implicit, which was um, folks really liked the fact that it was a 12 megapixel color camera. Like that was used all the time because you could do pipelines of neural models where it's like, say, detecting a person who's at a distance and then you can detect where their hand is like Geeks GX did. And then from that hand, you could do hand pose. And since it was a 12 megapixel sensor, you could do that really far away because then you could still take the full resolution and have a lot of pixels to know how the hand is oriented. Uh, so people really liked the 12 megapixel. They really liked those high resolution. But for the depth aspect, um, no one, it had a million depth points. It was 1280 by 800 um, at you know, high frame rate depth. And like no one used it. <laughs> Everyone used yeah. 640 yeah. by 400 because on the depth of point clouds and stuff, it was just too much. Like people generally just wanted to know where something is and 300,000 depth points is plenty granular for that. So folks wanted high resolution so that we, we hit it on that, but um, they didn't need as high resolution depth. Uh, and the high resolution depth global shutters actually drives a lot of cost. So Oak D Light um, takes it from you know one megapixel to like 0 0.3 megapixel depth while still keeping, this is a 12 megapixel RGB to um, a 13 megapixel RGB. So it's technically a higher resolution, uh, but it's a it's a lower cost image sensor. So the, the all the Oak D stuff is, is nicer, but for a ton of people, this is plenty. So. That's what Oak D Light is all about: is is getting the price down, the size down, the weight down, getting the mounting. We have M4 mounts on the back, in addition to tri tripod mounts, um, and then just making something that you know people actually need, so it's just not overkill. Yeah, yeah, really, uh, really awesome project, and uh, it is very tiny and uh, much powerful. And uh, on on your Kickstarter page, I also uh, you know there is also a demo. 
your uh, your uh, your 3D camera module and the uh, the uh, mini camera. Yeah. Uh, as I know, it is very uh, uh, tiny and very powerful. And we just uh, uh, do the demo, uh, uh, I remember, less than one day. Uh, I mean, it is very convenient to use uh, uh, the, the, uh, the 3D camera module. It makes uh, a mini paper uh, smarter. All the computer vision algorithm can be run on this small module. Yeah, very awesome pro uh, module. Thanks. Yeah, and, and that's our goal, right? And, and I always forget to talk about that part is, you know, that was, I just focus on the things, you know, we should do better. And we have this huge opportunity to learn. So all our backers and all our customers were able to tell us things that we just didn't anticipate. Um, you know, we we were selling this largely as like a development kit. And we're like, cool, it's a dev kit with an enclosure. Folks will love this. Uh, but folks said, well, yeah, we really do want it. We don't just want a dev kit. You know, we want to be able to put these on robots in production. And so that's, that's what this is about. But the thing that uh, I kind of skipped over on that is the feedback you know, was, it's so easy to get going. Like, that's why we want to just use this. It's, it's yeah, so easy yeah. to get it's going. Yeah, very easy to use. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, especially for, uh, as we know, uh, we, we use it very, uh, very uh, useful and uh, very convenient to use. And, uh, uh, you know, as the vendor of, uh, uh, about the mini paper, uh, uh, as you know, as a vendor of Stanford Paper Robot Dog, uh, beginning of April 2020, we shipped uh, many Stanford Paper Robot Dogs worldwide and got a ton, ton of feedback from people. And we also learned a lot of lessons about how to make a robot and uh, what functions our customer design. And not only the hardware device, but also the rich software, not only the uh, ROS platform, but also the OpenCV AI functions. Uh, so we created a mini paper, uh, this is mini paper. And uh, actually it is a real ROS and the OpenCV uh, robot dog. Uh, it is support uh, Slam navigation and uh, it will make uh, the robotics easier for maker, hacker school, homeschool families, enthusiastics and beyond. Uh, we are also, as you know, we, we are learn, uh, learn a lot from the uh, your, uh, your module. And we are also preparing many user guides and uh, video guides to make it as simple, as easy as possible. Uh, how do you see Mini Pepper project on a uh, Kickstarter campaign? Yeah, yeah, so I'm super excited about Mini Pepper. <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's why I shared it so much. And, and folks, folks watching this, um, you know, may think that, oh, we, we share things like willy nilly on the Kickstarter. We don't, um, you know, for, for, Every time we share something, we've probably turned down a hundred people, right? Um, yeah, at least, right? yeah. Um, and so we're only sharing things that we're like absolutely like you know we love this. We know our market's going to love it. And and the thing that I'm excited about with um, Mini Pupper is you know it brings something that you know as as just someone who's curious or an electrical engineer or a student or anyone can now play with you know similar technology to what you used to have to get a college degree to get access to. And you know, there, I'm, co I'm confident that there are people who spent pretty much you know, five, 10, six years of their lives you know, getting degrees, getting in a position so then they can go work at Boston Dynamics. <laughs> and then they probably yeah, get yeah. there and they're like, you're on the QA team. You know, you're, you're only writing like QA backend stuff, like stay away from the robot, right? They're probably great people. I don't know. I don't know anything about Boston Robotics. But the, the thing that excites me the most is that like, and my son, he's two, he's going to be able to play with this thing, right? Like I'm going to set up some very basic pipelines, you know, um, using, uh, using Ross. And, and I think what folks don't, you know, immediately see with mini pepper is since it's Ross, like you can set it up with like a map of your house, like tell it to go here, like click on the map and then the dog will like go do the thing. Right. Yeah, and you can set it up to uh, respond to hand signals. So it's going to be so interactive in a way that like, you know, feels like science fiction, but it's not science fiction. And then you can just quickly program it to do the things you want. So going back to my childhood vision, and I think a lot of folks who ended up in technical fields probably had similar, I wanted to make a little robot that could like bring people food at a party automatically, right? Like I thought that'd be so cool to like bring food and drinks and stuff. 
Uh, and with mini puffer, like you can do that, right? Like you can actually make like a little delivery dog. You can make it interactive, playful with kids. You, you could make it pretty much the show of the party too. So um, I'm excited to see it. And I think, you know, I, I kind of want to look at your campaign real quick. Um, it's moving really fast, right? I think the market has said, agreed yeah, with yeah. us. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, very interesting campaign. Yeah, yeah, as you know, we, we will uh, prepare uh, as many as possible, make, make many uh, user guide uh, videos and make it uh, very easier to use for other guys. Yeah, we also we will also make some uh, more OAKD light uh, module uh, demo based on mini paper. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and, and I think the ones that you've done so far are really cool, leveraging a lot of the open source you know, efforts like mm -hmm. to be able to just, you know, give a dog uh, hand signals <laughs> like and <Yeah>. then <laughs> and, and I'm really excited with that, too, is, you know, Ross is very powerful. So say you have Oak Delight on there, um, you, you can use Ross to do these really interesting things like you can do a hand signal, which means like go to the fridge. Right. And and since it's Ross and it has, you know, Nav2, like then the thing can just go to the fridge. <laughs> like, so right now you're doing hand signals, like, you know, controlling yaw pitch and roll, which are much easier to film. So I think they're the, the, the right thing to do. But um, folks are gonna be able to do so much more interesting things with the combination of this easy percep perception and then the power of, of Ross and the tutorials that, that you, you know, make it so easy to use um, on, on Mini Puffer. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With, with the Ross and uh, open CV AI, AI module, we can explore many, many interesting use cases. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, very thank, uh, thank you so much uh, again yeah. for, for your time. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for making Mini Pepper. Uh, I backed it right away. I'm excited to get mine. I already have plans for how it's gonna how it's gonna play with my son, and hopefully it'll plant the seed of you know him him getting into you know engineering. So it's. My grand scheme, you're helping on my grand scheme to get my two-year-old in engineering. <laughs> okay, okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, thank you.